Hey there folks, Bob Yeager here. So today I'm at a local conservancy where uh, myself and a bunch of scouts have been working uh, over the weekend, actually over the past couple years, building bog bridges and trail furniture and things. And I figured it's probably a good time for a little woodcrafty lesson. A lot of people want to go out in the wilderness and do some primitive skills and build lean-to shelters and tripods and tri-sticks and use their axes and knives and all these different things, which is great. I, th I think that's fantastic. Get out there, do it, have a good time doing it. Um, but one thing I could tell you is simple projects like these bog bridges, which I'll show you how they're constructed in just a moment, um, is a really good way to get yourself outdoors do something productive in the wilderness, especially if it's on your own land or you can work with a local conservancy like we do at this lake. Um, and it's something good to do with the kids, you know, getting them out there and moving some lumber and dimensionalizing the lumber and laying things down and teach them a little basic construction, uh, but also teaching them why this is important. <laughs> so where I'm at right now is lower level of the conservancy here it's near the lake uh, there's a lot of springs and runoff that come through here and the main trail cuts right through here uh, so you get a lot of bogs a lot of muddy areas where you can't really pass through and for years uh, you couldn't make it halfway through this trail without being up to your knees in mud and so a lot of things weren't seen uh, so there's a lot of areas where people didn't get to enjoy or go fish or um, see when there was deadfall and widow makers hanging around. So it wouldn't be until somebody decided to trudge their way back through in the midsummer when it was hot and dry that they'd start seeing that there was some issues around. Um, so being able to pass through allows us to be able to better um, keep this area um up to part like make it look nice uh so like i'd never noticed before today that there's an old tree stand there which you're allowed to hunt down here um but things like that could be cleaned up so nobody gets hurt on it um there's this whole open woodland area nobody's gotten to enjoy in many years and it was something as simple as a local eagle scout in our troop Wanted to do a project a couple years ago. The Conservancy had just opened back up after they redid the lake. And um, the people that run the Conservancy said, well, how about some bog bridges so we can get back through these trails? Um, and then one after the other, a few eagles over the years just kept building these bridges and, until finally we can reach the end of this trail on the other side of the Conservancy, which is pretty far, about two miles. So. Let me just kind of walk you through so you can see what these look like brand new constructed because we use uh, rough cut lumber that's from an Amish logging mill, mill uh, lumber mill. Um, it's not treated, but it's green wood. And that doesn't mean green. I'll show you what it means. Give you another idea of a little project you can do. It's not very difficult. This is just done with a chainsaw. And you cut a couple blocks out of uh, down log and Cut that log in two. Obviously, using a chainsaw probably be a good idea. And then, anytime you have those those places you like to camp, you like to picnic, you like to sit, you like to just admire the view. You're making the wilderness a little more comfortable for you. Now, with modern woodcraft, modern day woodcraft, building camp furniture was always something that you would do. Um, it's about including yourself with nature. I think what happens a lot of times, I've talked about leave no trace in the past. Um, when you have your own piece of property, or you have uh, a place like this where it's a conservancy, um, we want people to feel like they're part of nature without disrupting it too much. Um, and what they've done here in this whole area with these these trails, is the, the camp, like kind of a benches on the sides and the bog bridges and all these things it's allowed people to enjoy this natural surrounding more and more 
um, which once again lends to conservation because more people notice when something's not quite right or when there's hazards that need to be taken care of um, or when maybe there's trash being dumped in an area you couldn't readily get to. Uh, now something can be done about those things, which you won't find a piece of trash on this property. Uh, there's plenty of uh, scouts and other people to come up and make sure everything stays tidy all the time. But making furniture, I think that's where a lot of people mistake the term woodcraft with woodworking, where the term woodcraft is a set of skills that every woodsman or outdoorsman possesses, including hunting and fishing and angling and trapping. Um, including what many call today bushcraft um, and survival. It also has to do with making camp furniture, uh, making your own gear, um, using the resources from the wild to create something that helps you live, thrive, and strive uh, for more in the wilderness without damaging anything. Uh, most people I know that do the things that I do and that you may do, um, probably put more hours into cleaning up and conservation and make sure everything stays nice more than anybody else around. And the more we get out there and we find these interesting things we can do in the wilderness, um, the more time people are spending out there and the more conservation happens as a byproduct of us spending time in the wilderness. So let your imagination run wild. Um, one thing I'd I read up on years ago was a lot of the old scout manuals and things. They wouldn't tell the kids how to do something. They'd tell them what they needed to do and what supplies they need. And then the boys would have to figure it out from there. Um, obviously, these bog bridges and this conservancy, you know, the last ones that just got completed over the weekend, they had a framework to build from. They seen current bog bridges. Um, you know, they had people from the Conservancy telling them how they wanted it done and all these different things. But when they first started laying these bridges a few years ago, there was no framework. It hadn't been done here yet. Uh, so people were learning as they went. Uh, it's not a difficult task. It's a very simple thing to complete. It's a bit of work because you have to carry everything in. There's no way to tractor it in or truck it in. So it has to be lugged in by hand. But after the first one was built, it was easy to build the second section and then the third and so on. And then as the years progress, more people just saw it as this thing that was here for as long as they could remember and they were helping to add on to the existing framework. Well, it starts with a framework. It starts with something that you create. And I think it's fun, especially if you own a piece of property or you have a friend that owns a piece of wilderness property or you can work with the local conservancy or your local um, forestry service, park service to, to get the family out there, to get the community out there to, to work on and come up with different ideas. But that also comes down to having to do some grown up stuff like going to meetings and things. You know, um, in all my years doing it's called American Woodcraft and being part of conservation, I've found more and more and more that the more I get involved at the meetings, the more these great ideas I have in my head actually come to fruition. When I'm just thinking, hey, you know, they should, or it'd be nice if they had this thing. Uh, I wonder if they know this would, you know, those kind of things. Well, those things never happen because you don't show up and talk to the right people. And a lot of people get a little bent out of shape nowadays about, well, there's bureaucracy and red tape. Actually, it's a lot simpler than you think. They're looking for community ideas. Most of the time, they're, they're looking for community involvement and, and thoughts that come from skilled woodsmen, hikers, backpackers, and campers to give them suggestions, to let them know what's not right and what needs to be better. Because they do want it to be a place that people enjoy for a long, long time and that's concert, you know, um, that's protected. So part of the whole element of woodcraft craft and wilderness skills and all these things, it's great when everybody goes out there and does all their primitive skills and 
survival trainings and all these things, but get involved with your local parks, with your local conservation areas, local wilderness areas, friends that you have that own wilderness land and say, hey, you know, I'd be willing to put my efforts in. How about I come out and we build bog bridges? How about I come out and we make some benches along the trail? How about I come out and help lay some borders with some deadfall along your trail to keep keep it under control a little bit more? And luckily, we're not bringing materials in that weren't found there anyway, really. So when they rot, they'll go back to nature and just feed it. Ever since they started this project down here, it's gotten better and better and better. But I have to say, it's because there's a community involvement in it. And the first time I turned my micro community of people onto this place, as soon as they came down here, they wanted to do something. But it doesn't have to be this daunting or difficult task to do woodcraft skills. And it doesn't always have to be building your shelters and, you know, Dakota fire pits and stuff. Um, that's more on the, the realm of camping or survival. It could be something as simple as, you see this big tree here? Well, this could be easily be a habitat for a lot of local animals. It's off the trail, it's not gonna hurt anybody. Um, but if this was on your own property, you could easily carve a notch into this log and make a nice bench area. And right here in front of it, make a nice little campfire area and create your own little camp. Even if you only had an acre of land, if you had deadfall like that, it'd be pretty simple to, to create an area like that. And you'd be learning some skills. You'd be creating a place you wanna come back to, which means you'll frequent it, which means you'll make sure that it stays cleaned up and protected. And it's something, like I said, you can get the kids out there and do with you um, and have some fun. I've noticed lately when a lot of people talk about wilderness skills, they talk mainly about survival and shtf and doomsday folks i gotta say enjoy yourself go out there because you want to don't make it a struggle every time you go to the wilderness um, it's good to practice all your skills but at the same time you can be practicing your skills while you're enjoying yourself uh, if you're not having fun and realizing you're not a visitor of nature you're actually part of it you came from it and you're contributing to it then what's the point if you're always thinking about doom and gloom or preparing for the next bad thing to happen? Uh, go out there and practice your skills while you're just enjoying yourself. Take a day hike, uh, pack a knapsack or a haversack, and go out there and just sit and enjoy yourself and look, look around you, your natural environment, and say to yourself, what can I do with these things? What can I do with the resources that are already here and create something of more permanence that allows us to enjoy our time out there a little more often. I know there's certain places you're not allowed to build benches and bog bridges and shelters and all these different things, but there's places that you are allowed to do that. And if you have skills, which I know many of you have better skills than I do, um, there's no reason why you can't get involved in a local community like community centers, your local schools, local conservation areas and get the kids involved in these things for those of you that do carry these skills with you and enjoy them spend more time with the scouting organizations they need you now more than ever some of these skills are being lost but the more we kind of pick away at it the more we give it back to our community and teach them how to do it the more we're going to see of this type of thing which we need it right now like i said more than ever so Let's take a look at the bog bridges. So after a year or two, um, the wood starts getting this, this look to it. it. It can be slippery when it's wet, but when it's new, it looks like this. And it's untreated, like I said, but these are about two inches thick, these planks and the rough cut. And they're green because they didn't get kiln dried. They weren't left to season for years or anything like that. Uh, they were very saturated with water when we were using them. So you're not going to get a lot of splitting and cracking and everything. They're already used to the elements. But basically, we're taking some 8x8, eight eight, um, 3 feet long 8x8s. Eight and then we have these 10-foot sections, 12-foot sections of planks. And you just lay the 8x8s eight eight on the ground every few feet. 
and lay the planks on top and bolt them down. It's not hard to do. It's a, it's a pretty simple project um, and it'll make it so you can get to areas you wouldn't normally be able to get to. Now keep in mind, you're not gonna be driving quads over this unless you make them wider, obviously. Um, but we don't, we don't drive quads back through here or anything. And you don't have to make the whole trail into these things. You look for bogged out areas that can, uh, let's say, make it not such a great experience to come down through the trail. And that's where you build them at. Just like we had uh, younger scouts, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts come down through and take some of the down deadfall and lay it on the sides of the trail to help further with <coughs> thing, excuse me, like weed control. And just to kind of, these paths tend to disappear um, in the fall when all the leaves fall on it. it. It gets harder to see the paths and everything. So the logs on the side help at uh, the edges of the path be a bit more visible. And then there's cutoffs, like there's plenty of people that would start to walk back through here. But you see this log here and you see that the trail goes this way. But, so we just, chose some areas that were in the most need. Let's see, show you from this end. So you have these eight by eight footings. They just lay on the ground. And then you have these planks on top that are about two inches thick. Um, and like I said, they started about 12 feet long and we cut them down as needed and everything. But it's a very simple project. What's nice is this is a floating bridge. So when it does get boggy through here and the water starts to fill up a little bit, you can actually fill these float a little bit, but they don't go anywhere. They stay put. So it's a simple project. Um, it's a woodcraft project because you can make these planks out of trees that are in the area that you're, you're needing to build the bogs. You just have to flatten two sides basically, yeah. or three sides. So you have, you'd want to flatten the top you'd want to flatten the bottom side and you want to flatten any side that's going to be butted up against another piece but when i was a kid that's what we made them out of was logs and we just flattened three sides and butt them together and uh flatten two sides for the eight by eights the thicker parts that we were laying into the ground and uh if they were too thick like they were thicker than other ones we just dug out the ground a little bit and sunk them down in a little bit further to level it up but it's such a simple project. And to me, this is one of the elements of woodcraft and that's making your environment around you conducive to you being able to care for it and for people to enjoy it without disturbing the natural landscape. See, there's still drainage going underneath these. So it's not like flat on the ground or anything where it's blocking anything. Uh, it's not gonna cause erosion or anything. We didn't dig any ground away to make these bridges stay here. We just put them right on top of the mud and whatever this game trail that was already here. And uh, I think it's a great project and you can start small. I have a small three foot bog bridge at my place right by a creek. Um, it does get covered over in water sometimes because uh, it's not quite tall enough. But during the times I'm hunting and stuff, it's usually pretty good and I can just walk down through there where before I couldn't even cross that area of the creek. I'd, I'd sink in up to my ankles. So it's a little woodcraft project I think you guys would enjoy. And you see, it's not that difficult. Lay some eight by eights or six by sixes on the ground, bolt some planks down to them, make sure they're nice and heavy. And like I said, I like rough cut green lumber if you can find it, uh, because it's not gonna crack. If you're not using rough cut green lumber, you're gonna have to use pressure treated. But the whole thing about these bog bridges is they're made out of the materials that were found in a local area. So the wood was actually sourced from the local area, uh, from down trees and things like that. And when they rot, they go back to nature. Uh, they're, they're not something that's going to contaminate nature with a bunch of you know, chemicals and things like that. But you see this one, this one sunk right into the ground here. This is from a few years ago, and it's finally leveled itself out, it's done. And that's what happens with bog bridges. They typically sink themselves in. This one's probably the most solid one out of all of them in this entire park. But you see, it doesn't stop the natural run through areas to go down to the lake. You see the water running right underneath it. And animals are actually building their habitats not too far from it. Back in this brush here, you can actually find some beaver sign. And down by the uh, lake where these runoff points come through under these bridges, you can actually find some sign of uh, some fisher and some mink. 
So, like I said, just a simple project. And uh, I think we're gonna need another one in this area. <laughs> uh, it's a simple project. It's not something that's done in a weekend. Uh, it's something you do as you, as you can. And I think it's nice to have that kind of project that you can get kids involved with and they can use how to learn how to use a hammer and a saw. You don't need any power tools. Um, you can bring like a chainsaw in. Um, if you notice these ones, they were stacked. So the eight by eights are stacked on top of one another just to bring it up a bit higher because this would drop too low down into the bog. Uh, so you can get pretty creative with it. You can put a hand rail on it, whatever you want to do. Uh, we just make them simple uh, because there is an expense involved, obviously. But this is something that you can do as a traditional type thing. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, my pap would take me out to his camp uh, way, way back in the hills of West Virginia. Uh, it was about 150 acres or so. And this is the kind of thing we would do on like a 4th of July weekend or something and say, hey, there's a bog down by the creek. I'd like to be able to get through there because uh, he did a lot of hunting and trapping. So we load up the tractor and or a couple pickup trucks with wood and we take them down in there and we build the bog bridges. And what's nice is, like I said, you're not being disruptive to the environment. We're not using pressure treated materials or anything like that. You can. Um, we're using what, what's available to us. So just think to yourself, just think to yourself in the future, instead of just breaking out your, your pocket knife or your belt knife or your ax and building some sort of shelter like everybody else does all the time. Uh, once you get your camp set up, go out and survey the area where you recreate. If you own the land, like I said, even better. If you don't, ask the landowner's permission or get involved with like a conservancy like this uh, or with state DCNR. Uh, like I'm a volunteer in the wild areas of the DCNR state of Pennsylvania um, and see what kind of projects you can do and that you could take the kids out um, to have them help do these things with you. It's a great time for everybody. It's, you get to spend hours, if not days in the wilderness. Uh, you'd be surprised what you see. Like the boys that were here, there was probably about 23 boys here over the weekend. And they built a bridge and they sat on that bridge to have lunch. And we watched foxes and all kinds of wildlife together. And uh, they sweat and they learned what hard work was. They learned a bit about construction. But they also learned about how this adds to the conservation of their natural environment by making these paths through here. We're not getting machines in, cutting trails and all this stuff. Um, we're not going to have anybody riding quads through here because they can't with these bog bridges here. <laughs> um, but also what's going to happen is, is more people will be able to experience the conservancy and enjoy it for what it is and enjoy everything that it has to offer because they have more distance they can cover and they can also see certain things that might need to be done where before we wouldn't have been able to see those things without this access in here. So just a uh, quick little video while I'm out making sure no tools were left behind from this weekend and uh, I'll catch you next time. Oh, by the way, I'm releasing the uh, first module of the Woodcraft League Masters Woodsman series on our private website very soon. And I'll keep you guys up to date. I'm hoping to have it done in time for Christmas for you guys. All right, take care. Oh yeah, hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment. I like to see that stuff.